Oh, it's you again. <laughs> Welcome back! Hmm? Oh, hi. I'm Mark. I'm a professional artist, an art teacher, and in this week's episode of my weekly series for artists I call YouTube Art School, I'm gonna show you how I teach my students to draw any pose for your characters from imagination. We'll start off simple and then move on to harder poses with perspective and foreshortening. All of this for free. Uh-oh. Quickly, let's get this class started. classes and session pay attention how to draw poses any pose today's class will be split in three parts three different levels of complexity to make your way through if drawing poses is something that you've been struggling with from simple to complex poses if you're a beginner at this we'll start from level one the different steps will be marked in the video timeline so you can easily refer back to it later let's start with level one what should you focus on the key to drawing any pose is to know the ingredients that go into it. What are the basics that make something like this drawing possible at all? Cylinders and spheres, obviously. Wait, you're thinking that's not obvious, are you? I'll show you. But first, I must admit that I lied about the class being free. It's not. To keep watching, you must pay the class fee of either one like or one sub. Do it now or, or else. Well, I can't verify, can I? So let's just keep going. Drawing cylinders and spheres is at the core of drawing poses at the core of constructing characters. It starts off so simple, just a basic cylinder. But when you arrange a bunch of them in a certain way, when you stack them on top of one another, for example, vary the size and diameter, toss in a few balls, very quickly we get a sort of a structure that reminds us of a person with head, torso, hips, and limbs. As simple as cylinders might seem though, I've seen this again and again with students where the cylinders won't be quite uh, like cylindrical, I guess. They look a bit flat or won't be oriented in the right direction to match the perspective of the imaginary senior character is in. When that's the case, your character's pose will tend to look broken, so pay close attention to it. Practice this stuff. It's like the flower to your cake. It's the main ingredient, essential to drawing poses in perspective from imagination. Do not start by focusing on details and anatomy. Unless you have the right foundation, this will be mostly a waste of time while also being very frustrating at the same time. Next, you'll obviously want to practice drawing the human body. Well, not the human body quite yet. Instead, practice drawing the body mannequin with correct perspective. I go over how to do that exactly in a recent video, so check that one out after this if you're not sure how to do it. Very quickly though, I use these pieces to create my mannequins. I start with a simple ball with a jaw for the head, an egg shape for the torso, a cylinder for the abdomen, another one for the pelvis, although slightly different between males and females, as you can see here. And then it's just a mix of spheres and cylinders for the arms and the legs. Before we learn to draw poses, we have to get good at the basics. Practice drawing simple human mannequins like this in standing neutral poses. This needs to become relatively easy to do before you can move on to level two. And of course, I'm flying through the steps here since I'm trying to cram as much info as possible in a short YouTube video. But if you like how I teach and you know want to get better at this and more, I created a massive art program over two years of full-time work and I'm always working on more content and updates for it. It's a complete art education program, perfect for complete beginners, but I also have a lot of professional artists as students. It's great for everyone who's serious about improving their art as effectively as possible. I think the ratings it gets speak for themselves. Check the coupon in the video description for a big discount on the art school program until the end of the month and start your art journey the best way possible. Don't miss out, next month's subscriber discount won't be as high. At level two, we're gonna focus on simple poses in basic perspectives. Being familiar with correct human proportions and how to build a human mannequin like we saw in the first level is going to be a big help now. And before we can draw poses from imagination, we have to start by drawing from reference. Without references, you can't improve. You need to add information to your brain to acquire new skills. Practicing from imagination does not help you get much better. It only practices what you already know. That's what we'll do in the final step, but we're not there yet. By the way, I got this from a photo pack on QBrush. I'll put an affiliate link in the video description if you're curious where I got it from. Starting with this reference here, I'll begin by constructing the pose with simple cylinders and spheres as I did before, except this time we're trying to align those basic volumes in space at the correct angle, in the same way we see them represented on the reference. That's harder. That's the construction. It's still rough, but that's the whole point. It really took me no time to get to this stage, so if I make a mistake, no big deal. It's not like I'm super committed to this yet anyways. 
From here though, all I gotta do is connect the dots, close the silhouette, and do my best with the anatomy based on what I know and what I can see from the reference. It's this process of construction and refinement that's gonna allow you to do this from imagination eventually, like we'll see at the next level. At level 2 though, practice using references in simple angles and simple poses. Avoid anything too complicated for now. And the best way to learn a good number of poses is without a doubt by practicing gesture drawing. Drawing lots of simple poses with a time limit so you really have no time to focus on details. It forces you to focus on what matters. Do it now! And by now I mean after this video. And you can check the recent class on the topic to see my entire process. I'll put a link down below. As your repertoire of poses grows and as you get more and more comfortable constructing simple poses from basic volumes like cylinders and spheres, you'll be at a good point to move on to level 3. At level 3, we'll introduce more obvious foreshortening to increase the difficulty a bit. Or a lot. Still, I'm always avoiding the more extreme poses I likely won't ever need to draw my characters in. Always focus on poses you're likely to use in the future. you learn more from them since you're subconsciously aware they might come in handy later. Stuff we subconsciously think we won't need in the future gets discarded from memory real quick and they don't contribute to you improving as much. You know, just like Matt's class in elementary school. I couldn't see the point of learning how to do big complicated divisions, so I remember nothing from it now. My brain got rid of that arguably useless knowledge as soon as it could. A pose like this though, mm, I'm subconsciously taking notes since there's a high chance I'll use part of it in my future characters. Now back to foreshortening. It's definitely harder but like what we've seen so far, if you construct a body with simple cylinders and spheres, we can get some great looking poses really quickly. Those are just harder to finish up since anatomy is hard enough and then on top we add foreshortening. Ugh. But there are different levels of anatomy definition. Start simple. Initially, don't worry about defining all the muscles. Focus on the general shapes. Simpler forms first, where it's more forgiving. Here, I really don't have a whole lot going on in terms of details, but it looks like a good figure in a convincing pose already. I know this might seem to some of you like a chore because you're lazy, but a good mind trick for motivation is to always leave the door open to pushing this further, possibly mm, turning the best ones into new original characters or using the pose to draw a fan art. That's a lot more compelling and probably the main reason you wanted to learn how to draw poses in the first place anyways. It doesn't have to be all just study. Mix both study and creative process together once in a while. It makes it a lot more fun. Now once you've done all of this for a while and you've built some good confidence, try to sprinkle in your practice poses from imagination. <gasps> Maybe like every five poses from reference, try one from imagination. If you can't quite do it all when you try, help yourself with a reference. No shame in that. Remember, no reference, no learning. Doing this is great for confidence, but it should also help you realize some of your shortcomings. You'll also develop a better eye this way. Win-win. As you learn more and more about anatomy, either by studying it directly or passively as you practice gesture drawing, your poses will only look more convincing. I'll quickly end the class with six typical mistakes students make and how to fix them to draw better poses. First, check the balance of your character. Spot the overall mass of the body and make sure the legs are on both sides. If not, your character will look like it's off balance, about to fall. Second, check your proportions. An ideal body height for aesthetic purposes is around seven heads tall. You can actually count those once you're done to make sure. Third, don't get lazy when drawing the hands and the feet. Those can really make or break a pose. It's hard, but it adds a lot of value. Fourth, imagine your character is on a grid so that the feet are firmly planted on the ground. Unless your reference isn't, obviously. To make sure they're firmly planted, I like to draw little ellipses for the heels and the toes in the same perspective as the ground. When drawing from reference, you should be able to spot the perspective of the ground fairly easily. This will avoid you ending up with floaty poses. Gross. Finally, try avoiding stiff poses by always adding some bend to the limbs. Even a standing pose won't result in straight legs. Here, for example, the thighs curve forward while the lower legs curve backwards. This looks a lot more natural. And well, that's gonna wrap it up for this week's class. If you haven't got them already, I'm offering my brush set for free. Those are all brushes that I use all the time, including the legendary line art brush that I use for today's drawing. It's very valuable, but also free. That's good value. Now hit the notification bell to be sure to be on time for next week's class. And don't forget to use the code below to get the discount for my art. Welcome! <laughs>
back. Mm. 